Right. All right. Right. We're going to talk reverse politics and what is going on in the Niger Delta, good governance and the youth, and the internal affairs of the All Progressive Congress. We'll focus on that also too. But it's always a pleasure when you have Tony Prince Will join the conversation, a politician, and uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us on News Hop. Thank you. It's, it's, it's good to be here. Pleasure. All right. I would imagine that the APC and uh, the uh, administration of Governor Yeson Wike will have a story to tell at this point in time. If anyone asks you uh, what the political terrain is in River State at this point in time, what would you say? I would say it's bubbling. Um, it's going to be very active. Reverse politics is usually that, um, as most people know. In fact, most people know about reverse politics, uh, even if they're not from River State. So it's, um, it's, 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 no, it's no different. It's going to be very busy, very busy I'm sure. It's always very fascinating, fascinating too, when you think about uh, the River State political scenario, leading yeah. from 1999, yeah. uh, with, uh, with Odili and then yep. Amechi. So I don't Amechi Amechi also too, and then yeah. uh, you had um, Rutimi Amechi. But do you, would you consider your party to be in crisis? I, I say this because of what happened during the 2015 Oh yeah, uh, general election. Yeah, it was, it was not, wasn't you good. You were a major actor there. It was a horrible experience, I can imagine, for you. Do you think lessons have been learned or the self-destruct button is still being pressed? No, no, no. Lessons have been learned. Um, but, you know, we're still learning. Um, but um, we're definitely in a better place now. I mean, um, 2015 was horrible. But for those that don't know, it was a conspiracy from even within APC. Um, and, of course, outside of APC to make sure that we didn't have candidates. And it was all because of 2023. Mm. Uh, many people don't know that what happened to us in 2019 happened because of the anticipation of 2023. And it was important to some people that Amechi did not have a governor in River State because he was getting too influential, too powerful. And uh, if he had a governor in River State, then maybe 2023 would be an open and short case for him for president. Um, so some people within the party decided that it would be better to have a PDP governor. And so you see what we see today, which is Wiki as governor. He didn't get there by some uh, stroke of popularity. He got there because some, some people sat down and conspired to make sure that APC did not win River State. So those intrigues are not always available to the public. I mean, you know, lots of people who are not politicians that know about it. Mm. But we politicians know who and who conspired to make sure that Wiki remained in office. And um, it's politics. So when you say it's politics, what's your view of uh, Governor Wiki's performances so far as the governor of the state? Yeah, you know, unfortunately for uh, many people, we always see things as black and white. Somebody is either good or bad. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't see it that way. I think people are shades of grey. There are certain things that Wiki has done that are very good. Um, let's not make any mistake about it. What Wiki has built a certain level of popularity since he has been in that office. He has done some infrastructure within the Portacot metropolis, which are visible to the eye when you drive in and see. Um, you know, people's expectation of government is not usually very high. Um, you do a few roads here, you make a few flyovers there, you will receive praises and, 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 and admiration. Um, but if we really look at what a governor really should do, um, he's expected to grow the economy, he's expected to reduce unemployment, he's expected to improve people's health care, make education available to the masses. In that regard, of course, I'm not happy with what he has done. But um, he's done some good things and um, we can't take it away from him. Which is a raging argument. I've seen this argument many times mm. when people want to say we have scored points. Mm. They will point to infrastructure. Mm. But you also point to the fact that it doesn't necessarily translate into development, so in terms of the economic development or the, you know... No, but even, in, in, even infrastructure, I can build a few roads and a few flyovers, but what is infrastructure? Um, infrastructure is the kind of infrastructure that improves the economy of a state or a nation. So I want people to be able to have access from A to B. I mean, if I'm building flyovers along a bar road, that's infrastructure, but how exactly is it improving in the movement of goods from the rural areas to the metropolitan areas. Of course, if you're doing that, you're improving the economy of those areas. If I'm living in Ibadan now, I can, I can commute from Ibadan to Lagos and work in Lagos and go back to Ibadan. So I can save myself rent issues. 
Um, so that's the kind of infrastructure I'm talking about that grows the economy, not building infrastructure along a flyover. But like I said, many people don't have that end-to-end uh, uh, -end thinking. Um, so when they see fantastic roads, and the roads that he has built are quite nice, um, they will praise him. And you can't take it away from the fact that there's a road, and it's a fantastic road that has been built. But there are certain things we want to do, which is we want to reduce unemployment, especially youth unemployment. And when you ask that question, you won't get any good answers, because the truth of the matter is that unemployment has gone up, not down. But he doesn't acknowledge that. Well, I mean, that's not for him to acknowledge. It's for us to assess, and we have. Um, we know that um, if you want to grow an economy, you need to improve business. So the questions you have to ask are, do the politicians understand the language of business? What does business want? Do they ask business? If you ask business, they'll tell you what they want is improved security. They want to have a situation where they have skilled labor, a skilled workforce. You want to also make sure that you don't have issues like multiple taxation. Like the local government is asking me to pay this tax, this person is asking me to pay that tax. I want to know my tax so that by the time I start to plan my budgeting, I know what exactly my outlay will be. So that level of certainty I don't have. And of course, I want to be able to have access to cash grants at low interest rates. So availability of capital is another issue for business. In each of these four points, if you ask the River State government how have they helped, they will, be, they will be stuttering. What is their policy on youth unemployment? They will be stuttering. What have they done to improve the employment or employability of the younger population? They will be stuttering. So unfortunately for us, um, our level of governance is so low that if somebody builds a few flyovers, people will clap. And that's the responsibility of the opposition in a democracy where you have the incumbent, you know, being put on its toes as, mm. well, as, as an office now, mm. not as a person, on its toes to deliver on the promises, not only the promises, the things that the people deserve mm. as citizens and electorates, mm. as so to speak. So what then is APC doing if in all of this, what uh, the, the governor in <laughs> Wicca is doing will be, I mean, show up what he's doing. I'll show up to if I'm doing something. And then the opposition is not showing what I'm not doing, so it means I'm doing everything. So would it be right to say that APC is very weak? No, I think the, <laughs> if we look at opposition in states across the country, I think APC in River State would probably raise its hands as being very critical opposition of Wiki. Um, in the papers, in, on the radio stations, Rhythm FM, for instance, in Portacot is constantly um, engaging the opposition and they're constantly engaging the government. I don't think it's a problem of the opposition. I even don't think it's a problem of the state. The people of the state, to a great extent, know uh, the failures of the wiki administration. But you see, it's not so much as just the opposition, but civil society organizations as well. Um, I'm here speaking and I'm telling you that WICA is doing some good things, but it's doing a lot of bad things that are not uh, helpful to the state. That's not the normal conversation you hear from the opposition. Normally it's attack, attack, attack. And as such a, uh, to, to such an extent, the, the population tunes off when a politician is speaking because you're thinking the politician has an agenda. No. But civil society organizations have enough credibility to be able to say to governments, and they don't say it enough, this is where you're going wrong, this is where you're going right. Can you please correct that? And sometimes governments will listen because these are credible voices speaking. That's why I'm happy about this new electoral bill that has been signed, mm -hmm. because now there's more power given to the people. So the people will have a better say in who governs them. And politicians then will have to be careful that they only prepare themselves for popular inspection. In other words, people will actually say, right. you did well yeah. or you didn't do well. Right. So no, opposition is not weak, especially in River State. Right. Um, but if the opposition is constantly criticizing, criticizing, then you don't, you don't make any comment when the governor does something good. It, like, oh, these guys are always attacking. They're never saying anything positive, like PDP in, at the national level. They don't acknowledge anything the president does or um, does well. It's only when they see something wrong that they talk mm -hmm. about. We should be able to say, oh, this is not bad. You didn't do bad there, but please, can you do a bit more? Mm -hmm. That's the position I take. You know, when you came out, I was, I was joking with you that we have several people who watch Civil Bed in um, River State and you know, get a lot of calls from them. Yes. And I like your frankness and forthrightness about the issues affecting River State. Many of the things they talk about, the government has tried to deal with. For example, with the profile, 
which mm. they say is directly linked to the suit. And it is directly linked to the good. suit, yes, sir. And uh, we get the air quality reports from River State, which hasn't improved, you know, unfortunately, over the years. It's got some of the worst. Um, in fact, it's recommended people be on face masks <laughs> in River State, according to the international standards. Yeah. But what do you say in the way he tries to deal with these issues? Some have criticized an agricultural approach in solving the problem by going after, burning, uh, shutting down places, you know, sort of knee-jerk reaction. Do mm. you think that resolves the problem? You've got a more maverick solution to it. But, uh, I mean, I like the way you said he tries. I mean, it's an attempt. And, you know, uh, I, I issued a statement recently and PDP came out all guns blazing attacking me. Um, and my statement was something like, it's a good uh, gesture. Of course, we need to tackle Kupo fire. It's, uh, it's a menace, it needs to be addressed, but we need to do it really with a, a mindset of not just being tough on crime or on the crime, but being tough on the causes of the crime. Um, in other words, we know poor fire is done by people who are out there, you know, jobless, they're looking for something to do. So two ways in which you can do that. You can engage them in proper modular refineries and then B, you can engage them generally in other forms of employment. These people are idle and they're sitting there and their pipes are running across their backyards and they're thinking to themselves, well, if the government isn't going to engage me, I'm going to engage myself. So if you go there and you attack those poor fire, this, uh, this thing, you, you're basically saying to them, stop this line of business, but this other line of business. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, which I think is quite important, is remove the politics from it. Because I said, and they, they, they attacked me for it, I said, they are going after people who have refused to join PDP. So if you join PDP, I won't attack your profile. But if you are not in PDP, I will. And they said, oh, that means I'm saying that the other people are in APC. I didn't say that. I just said that if they're not in PDP, then their profile will be attacked. In other words, if they are neutral, or if they're in APC, or if they're in APCA, or any other party, their profiles will be destroyed. But if you're in PDP, then nothing will happen. And when I said that, they said, oh, but the, the facts are there. And you see, like I said, don't listen to politicians. Mm. Go and do your own independent investigation. The local government chairmen were conscripted to tell the people that if they join PDP, they should, they'll be left alone. And so let me ask you now, you get your uh, weather, um, air quality reports. Yeah. Has it gone, is it better? Exactly. So that is a gesture. That's why I said I like what you said. He tries. If you genuinely want to ad address suit, I've just given you a bit of a roadmap as to how to go about it. All right. Let, let me let me write on that one. Are you now accusing the governor of uh, yes. selective yes, yes, treatment yes. on I'm the not, clamp down? I'm not now accusing him. I accused him three weeks ago, and they've responded, and I've responded to their response. So it's not breaking news. I'm not now accusing, I accused... Do you have proofs? I've just said to you, don't take my own word for it. Go and do your own independent investigation. I'm asking because you are the one, I have, making, you are I have, the one bringing I have the accusation. In, I have individuals who have said as much. And I've put out the accusation out there. And, you know, the, the reality of it is that in the game we're playing of politics, when you say something, you say, oh, it's for political reasons. So what I'm just doing is getting them to understand that the news is out there. And I am putting it out there that it is not uh, being, we've, we've had profile issues for several years. Why now? I mean, I expect the media to ask questions. Why now? But then, okay, fine. If it's a genuine attempt at it, we'll say, well, better late than never. Because people have been complaining about profile for years. But why now? Leading up to an election, just before an election. And then I'm telling you that local government chairman were briefed. Yeah. If they join PDP, they allow them. There are places that are very popular where profile is going on as we speak. And those places, no surprise, That's, are okay. PDP enclaves. But, but, pr Prince, uh, uh, Tony Prince Will, let me bring this question to you. If we've identified the problems that the uh, people of River State are faced with, which you said uh, is majorly unemployment, mm. aside the fact that the environmental degradation that pervades there. Insecurity. Uh, you. Uh, Vied to be governor in 2007. You also vied to be governor, I want to believe, 2015. 
uh, first under um, action Congress, then Labour Party eventually. If, for instance, you're now with APC and you're looking forward to getting answers, not just about criticizing the government in yeah. power, but bringing about solution, which is number one for an average person who's from River State, mm. job. Mm -hmm. What are the opportunities you think are there and how can these opportunities be extended to the people of Rivers so that they can enjoy their stay? Yeah, it's, um, it's a good question you asked. Um, unfortunately, until now, we've had a political system and an electoral system where it's not always the person with the best solutions that gets elected. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example that if you have a plane and you have two pilots and you're there and you have a choice of which of the planes to join, one pilot tells you that he will give you first class seat, he will give you food, give you wine, and then when you're on your way out of his plane, after you get to your destination, he will give you a small envelope. And the other pilot says all he can offer you is that he can take you to the destination. Safely. Safely. The other Nigerians, many Nigerians would join the first pilot. <laughs> wouldn't you? I wouldn't. Why not? Because food and wine is not my problem, and the packet you will give me will not change my life. So I will join the second plane. Why would you do that? Because I want to get to where I'm going to safely. But the other one also uh, offers safety. You didn't. OK. All right, you didn't mention that. I no, just I didn't mention that. I just deliberately did not mention that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I, I so, had to, so I had to ask. So, so the point I'm trying to make is that even if you have solutions, it doesn't guarantee you a seat on the table. But I'm glad you asked the question. When I ran for governor, I ran for governor on a one-point agenda, which was job creation. because. I understand that the largest employer of labor should be small to medium scale enterprises. If Ben Bruce had not decided to set up Silverbird and continue along the line, there would be lots of jobs that are here today that would not have been. It's not Lagos State Government, it's not Buhari, but Ben Bruce that has created an environment that employment is being created. But ask the Ben Bruce's of this world how government is helping them. So we need governments to create the environment for business to thrive. But you can't create the environment if you don't understand the language of business. So when I ran, I ran on the job creation mantra because I know that I can create the kind of environment that business will thrive in. And I'm happy that we're now looking at an electoral system where people who make sense, people who can actually deliver for the people, are available. and then people who can make sense, but they're also not cowards, they're also not afraid. Because the political class, what they want to do is frighten people out of it. And you hear many people say, oh, politics is too dirty, I can't get involved. And I'm saying, no, it's because it's so dirty that you have to get involved. Politics is too important to be left to politicians. So if I was, for instance, sitting in that seat, I'll be pursuing the issues that affect job creation, insecurity in the state, the fact that you have multiple taxation, the absence of uh, um, capital. Most businesses, most young people, most adults, old people, if they had a little access to capital at low interest rates or grants, they would set up businesses that would employ people. So if you run on the uh, mantra of job creation, then ultimately you'll be judged by that. And I think that if we created jobs in River State, things would be significantly different. Job creation deals with issues of health. It deals with issues of education. It deals with issues of um, um, security. It deals with issues of transportation. Because I can create jobs in Ibadan just by creating an infrastructure line to Lagos. Those are the kind of things that we can do in River State as well. Um, but, you know, I'm tired of talking. Thankfully, the elections are coming, so it's going to be action very soon. Absolutely. Action all the way. I'm sure it's co directly correlated to the factors you've mentioned with driving investment into real estate. Sorry, can I talk about Dubai? Oh, oh sure. Do I have time? Sorry. A minute. In your a minute. Okay, please. Um, I'm going to Dubai in a few days. I'm going to go and see the expo, but I'm packing a lot of journalists with me. I'm going alongside a lot of young people. I want to show people what is possible. And I mean, going to the expo is like an opportunity for you to see the world in one location. For me, what is very important is that we don't just talk about things, but we actually show people things. And show people how you move the country from sand and desert yeah. to a, a teeming metropolis, which is now a tourism hub. I think we can do the same thing here. Hmm. A great way for us to end the conversation. But uh, this is one of several conversations we expect to have with Tony A. Princewell, uh, who is a politician. And um, definitely <laughs> someone who we are going to hear a lot from as um, the elections move closer 
uh, especially in real estate. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Let's take this quick break. We come back. It will be time for us to say bye-bye. But not before you hear the next Nigerian CEO. Please stay with us on News Hub.